That didn't happen in this one. Yes. It's an Italian one. We have an Italian art house, micro budget, insane as fuck adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's Herbert West Reanimator that has less to do with the source material than the Combs version. And not only that, Herbert West is this bearded guy who's like, I don't know, this schlubby Sargon of a cod looking guy. He does really look And good. then, you've got an extra dimensional being assumes human form in the form of Jeffrey Combs' uh, Herbert West, played by Italian because it's in Italy. But it's just like, it's like, they knew they couldn't get over under the shadow out of the shadow of the HP of the Combs version. So they literally made it part of the thing. So it was like, uh, this guy's working for like Cthulhu or something. It's like, I am a more ultra powerful evil thing that will overshadow everything and you know, he does all this sort of negative stuff. But I'm also totally a big, a, bu a randomly buff Italian yeah. guy oh, pretending cool. to be Combs. Like, holy fuck. This is actually the, the second Italian Lovecraft adaptation that we've seen with a very low budget, which manages to pull it off quite stylistically. Uh, yeah, the, the other we saw was um, an adaptation of The Color Out of Space. Yep. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite short stories. But so, this is a patron request, right? No. No. This you is not. me. No, no, no. This one wasn't a patron oh, request. Was a patron request. This one wasn't a patron This is because, well, I was told about the existence of this film. And then I looked it up, and then I, you know, I eventually bought a copy. And I, like, when I received it, I'm like, I gotta take notes for a review because at some point I'm gonna review it. And then I figured get a back secret critique out of the way as well, so that people can. I thought somebody was like desperately sitting at no, home. No, no, the other you know, refreshing, refreshing your YouTube page, being like, she said she'd do it eventually. I, I have a number. I of got page. all, I got all dolled up for this. I came home from uni after like being at the gym and I was sweaty and gross. I was like, oh, I have to do a backseat critique for a patron. I better get a no. shower before dinner. The other and one, I did my hair and I everything. Have, I have multiple backseat critiques to do. and oh, She seriously got a pile, though. I do. And the other one that we were thinking about doing tonight, which we might end up doing in a couple of days, is a patron request. It's happy death day to you. So if you requested that, it's coming very soon. We have other I know, ones. I love you. I love you, patron. It's... The problem is that, you know, Robin... Whether through a love of cinema or a love of just, you know, being masochistic, you know, to my film tastes, would be happy to watch films all the time. But Omega works all the time, uh, constantly oh. is running around being, you know, sort of running and stuff like that. And, <laughs> I'm running around running. Yes, and uh, and honestly, Omega doesn't like films as much as, as me. That's, that's true. That's true. She gave me this big whack and big pile. I'm like, pick one. I'm like, no, that's stupid. This sucks. I hate slasher films. No. This one's... Oh, God, no. This one's, like, almost two hours. No. No, this one's 85 minutes. Yeah, those are all the pay, the backs of critiques. No, Silver we will. I, pr I promise we will. I'm just, you know, like, doing I know. a PhD. And you know, so. yeah. So, Omega, in fact, she's doing, like, a full-time job of, like, PhDing, and, you know, that drives the sanest person mad, and so I, I try to think what it'll do with her. So. I was headbutting you, and you kissed me. Now you ruined it. Oh. But yeah, no, so, um, this was art Mad. housey. This is... I was like, in the, there was like a second where someone was being hit by a car, and like, blood was like, going out like, in stop motion. It, and I was like, this is an art film, isn't it? You tricked me. Honestly, I didn't trick you. I, I, I kept saying when I first got, when I received it was, this is the low-budget Italian art house version of Reanimator. I know, but I, I hear that word just hucked around by everybody, so I just I'm... never pay attention to it anymore. I love art house. Even on Twitter, it's like, oh, isn't art house? I love art house. Art house, little Caesar advert. And, you know, even like you know, Owen Citizen, his for the first like you know several years of his show, I'd seen pretty much every film he'd reviewed because I fucking love art house. You know, not for any highfalutin, uh, you know, hoity-toity way. I just love mad shit happening in a film. And it's like it's like a lot the of idea of like you know how when you see like European cinema, like made fun of, like that's what art house is to me. Yeah. Somebody making fun of like you know. Like, you know the Pistol Shrimps one where they have, like, they have, they're, what, look it up on YouTube, they're, they're great. And they have this thing where they're like, you know, what if Captain America was from different countries, like, Captain France. Captain France was like, like, you know, black and white, smoking a cigarette with like a thing of like alcohol in him, but like, but who will save me? Yeah. Looking off in the distance, like, like, you know how everyone like makes fun of European cinema? This is why we, we did that in the Turkish remake review, we did a, a tiny bit, t taking the piss out of French, uh, sort of. 
black and white French existential cinema. You know, so it's. I don't like existentialism. I don't but this one, it is obviously really low budget. I mean, like they have CGI steam. They have random it's... CGI stuff. You know, the effects are often not very good. However, some bits are fucking spectacularly well done. Yeah, you can obviously tell that the money that they had, they they used it creatively. And they and they used it very cleverly, like. The opening shot where you know she was like, "Oh, this is an art house." Wasn't that opening shit. shot? Like, the one where the car, you have the, like this on practically still image of something running over by a car. That was <laughs> shot spectacularly. You know, it's the sort of thing you can imagine. Uh, you know, give Tarzan Singh a budget. Every of, frame of painting. Give Tarzan Singh a budget of about two hundred quid and get him to do this sort of shot of something run over, and he'd come up with something like that. Probably. Could it be more colorful? Probably, but yeah. it was still pretty vibrant. But so. Herbert West is not who you think he is at the beginning because you think he's your man, but he's actually your man. Yeah, because it got the cold opening where you got this beardy guy. He's like looks like a, up. and the first thing he says, he looks like a YouTuber. Like he looks like he really wants to explain to you about like about rational atheism and how feminism is a cancer. And he sort of chained up, and then of course there's these you know reanimated corpses who are sentient, but they pretend to not be sentient for reasons. <laughs> Which is fantastic. And and then you've got you know this. Jeffrey Combs, Herbert looking, we Herbert West looking motherfucker comes in, and then and you're you like, find "Oh, out. it's the Reanimator." But you'd it's be the wrong. It's the Reanimator. And then Combs. you find out it's the beardy guy who's Herbert West, and you, you find out he had a daughter who got run over, and you know that caused all the problems. It's people who, instead of dealing with trauma like normal people, either becoming mentally ill or getting over it or having lasting effects or any range of the spectrum in between, decide that they want to Come play on, God. Boy. So tired. That's the tune. Okay, when I do this review, there's a bit where the guy is like wandering through the the oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be, that void, would be where you holding these green slug things that look like that are neon, look like the animating fluid in the original films, and we were all commenting how it looks like it's a rave, and I'm like, I gotta fucking play that song during the review. <laughs> Because it's, you know, the official end credits music of Reanimator 3 Beyond Reanimator, which is not the strongest Reanimator film, but it was still a rollicking good time. In many ways, it was almost a remake of uh, Hammer Horror's Frankenstein Created Woman. Right, no, but see, so this was Italian. Very Italian. And... Um, you could tell the guy, you know, the, the Italian, you know, the, 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 their version of Herberto Westo. No, he, Westini. Okay, Herberto okay. Westini. He, you could tell he'd really hit rock bottom because he was drinking American liquor. Yeah, he's drinking J and B. I don't actually, I don't know if J and B is American. Well, I'll assume it, might it was be, American. Might be, might be Scottish. It, it definitely did not seem Italian. I don't know. Google it. But yeah, but it's kind of weird because there's parts of it where like the art house ness takes over and it looks like Europe in like the early 1930s. But <laughs> yet your man, he has like a MacBook, and like you know a tablet, so you know it's modern day. And I'm like. Stop that. And then you've got like random like you know, violin solos and you know, okay. to us the violining sounded pretty bad, but all the Italians were really, really, really impressed by it and we assume they know more about classical music right. than we are, so we defer to their knowledge. And there's there's a random guy who looks a bit like Uncle Fester from... Is he has never explained what the crack is with him. He's yeah. just kind of like an eldritch demon just because, I, like everyone yeah, else. Like, yeah, because this, this one goes full on Lovecraft madness. Yeah. You know, um, you, the, you think, you think, oh, I'm coming up the climax. It's, it's gonna, no, no. It, no. It, it, oh, honey. There's like an extra 20 minutes of, well, the main character is not even there. And it's just like weird art house existentialism, low budget, you know, Lovecraftian like, mythos like, like stuff. Like an Armani photo shoot in a quarry gone horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, like, um, okay. The original Herbert West reanimator short stories done by Lovecraft. They were not oh, anything he had a passion for. They He considered them among his worst work. He literally did them for the money. And so they were not part of the mythos. He didn't give a fuck about them. I thought them. they were all right. And um, so that's why the, the Stuart Gordon, Brian Eusen ones never brought that stuff into it. Like there was an aborted Reanimator 4, I believe, where they were going to bring in the demons, but that never actually happened. But this one has gone full Lovecraft and it's bizarre. Yeah, but that's a good, I mean, it, like, you do kind of expect that. 
like you not know, from a Rhaenyra thing though, because it's always no, such from, a separation. No, but from 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 Lovecraft. So I'm not surprised that that would be a place where they went. I'm not just saying. It's, it's the sort of thing that, you know, for, for Reanimator, you, you should really do the Reanimator stuff, and then maybe bring it in later. Having it in, in make basically making Reanimator into a small part of a big, uh, Lovecraftian Eldritch thing, is a, is a weird choice. I. I yeah, but they only had 80 minutes, though. Like, they had to, like, you know, get it's... through the mythos really quickly. <laughs> Come on, people, we're at a deadline here. I... This film is decent. I got very few complaints, actually. You know, it's got good bits, it's got bad bits, it's fun, it's, uh... It's... I got no huge problems for it. Look, there's deleted scenes. Oh, great. But... The main problem is they called it Herbert West Reanimator, because this has nothing to do with Herbert West Reanimator, the stories, except for, you know, there's a guy called Herbert West who reanimates people. His character is nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, but since it's all in the public domain, that technically also makes this canon, because everything's canon. If only they had called it, if they had not used the name Herbert West Reanimator and just done it as a Lovecraftian sort of, you know, new thing. Sort of like The Void was Lovecraftian, okay, yeah. but not actually meant to be part of the mythos. All right, yeah, I can see it in that case. It would have got less attention because the name, because the name gets the, you know, the that's the only sucks. reason I bought it. But it would have been Which less... company made this? They were like, aha, we got it over on another person. Studio, that's too small, I can't see. Interzuna, Interzona. But one Indie thing... writes movies. But one thing I will say that's uh, very, very positive about this. Uh, this thing does similar stuff in a massive way that Astron 6 tends to do every so often in their films. I dropped it. In uh, Father's Day and in... Um, oh, your dairy came out just there. Father's Day. Father's Day. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> and uh, The Void, where they did their Lovecraftian stuff. This one handles it better, I feel. The Void was decent, but um, Father's Day... Oh, she did it again. And Father's Day is like, uh, it's got the bits when they're in heaven and hell, and it's special effects. Why it doesn't look too good? Well, uh, this one uh, handles it better, but on I assume for a slightly lower budget. No, well, it's pants. I work with a guy who would be like, be like, how the thing be like, no, well, it's pants. I love that. Because <laughs> you don't say pants, you say trousers. Pants are underpants. So what did you guys think of Herbert West? Herb Herberto Westini, a reanimator. Always, <laughs> always pants. <laughs> no. The, the wonderful thing about this, okay, the back of it, okay? Oh, God, yeah. This is hilarious. Oh. After the loss of his daughter oh. Eleanor, a famous scientist, Dr. Herbert West, experimenting with a special serum invented by him, desperately tries to bring her back to life. One sentence, half the fucking blurb. Mm. After a series of countless failures, he decides to use himself as a guinea pig. The results of this crazy act will be unpredictable. <laughs> Right, well. Based on the homonymous story by H.P. Lovecraft. And we had to Google that, because I'd never heard that word before. But you know what word they could have used? They could have used titular. Or based on the story by the same name. I, whenever I Come first on, read this... What kind of SAT I, bullshit is I that? asked my dad if that was... You know, I looked it up. It was a right. real word. And then I, I basically... I, get, I read it to my dad, uh, who... My um, father-in-law knows everything, seriously. Yeah, he's pretty clever. <clears throat> and... Uh, he seemed to. He gave the indication that that is not grammatically correct, but and so, but look at this. I would. There's I, no. Full you could. Stop. You could say titular there, but that that wouldn't really work. It's uh, grammatically correct. I would say based on the the H. P. Lovecraft story of the same title yeah, or that, the same. Name. Yeah, this is cool. This is clearly it's someone. Italian. It's an Italian film, so someone who English is not their first language mm -hmm. is attempting to be Google impressive, translate. and it's not doing too well. But the on, there's this. proper um, you know grammar everywhere else you know it's got all the stuff but the, like, you they, can no, you can tell end. because because just the way that that sentence is structured though after the loss of the experiment with a special serum invented by him it, it no, no, no. Uh, yes but look they, they've got punctuation everywhere else but they forgot it at the end right. that's pretty funny too if life breaks your heart you break life like uh, Ivan Drago. We had to watch it with the with the, uh, with the subtitles on because there's yeah. no English dub. English dub would make this even funnier. I suspect it'd make it even more confusing somehow, because there was big sways where I wasn't entirely sure what was going on. But that's because you know taking watching for the first time, taking notes, trying to come up with ideas, following the plot, listening to your ideas, trying to make put that into a thing I can write down quickly, trying to write it down quickly. It 
I will miss things. Although they did do that thing that I'm always saying that films should do, is like, oh, you know, we have something, we have a technical failing, like, it starts when his daughter's obviously a child, or like a tween. He keeps and then, killing her. And, oh, aye, he does though. And then, like, later on, it's, you know, ten years later, where she's like a concert violinist or whatever, undead. And so if you want your kid to be successful at classical music, you just got to kill her three or four times until she'll get No, she already was, because remember, she was attending that special school. I know, but still, you know, it'll make sure it'll happen. Just keep killing her. Various ways. But so... In black and white. But so he has not aged. They didn't even bother to add white to his beard. And we were like, pfa, it's ten years later. And then, like, you know, they come into contact and she she brushes his face and she's like, oh, we haven't aged a day. I guess you used another, you injected yourself with another serum, didn't you? And I'm like, ah, oh, that's perfect. You have a technical limitation. Just one line in the script sorts that out. I have noticed this thing. I'm calling attention to it. I'm giving it, a, you know, like... The lamp shading. Yeah, but so many, like, big-budget stuff that we see, one line of dialogue could have sorted a, a, a big pothole. Another I don't way, know why no one thinks of this. Another way they could have handled that without the line uh, would be to have... Uh, West clean shaven in the past mm. bits, and then have him have the beard in the present day ones because a beard makes someone makes a man look older. That's true. Though it wouldn't be. Oh, as... he did look like a pudgy YouTuber. I ain't gonna lie. Like. He did, and um, I did like the fact that he apparently's been injecting himself with weird weird results. Smash that like and subscribe. Who will I bring back? <laughs> no, you have a peek out of a poll on your Patreon to see who you reanimate <laughs> next week. In the cause in the in the love. <laughs> This reanimation is brought to you by Audible. <laughs> All right, I'm this done. guy, he's much older than West. He's pudgy. He's got the big beard. He's got dark hair. He's, he's very modern. He, like, Combs's love Combs's West was not a one-to-one -one, uh, match for uh, Lovecraft's West. Lovecraft's West is, I believe, short, slight, blonde. Yeah, and it takes place during the Great War, the, the story goes. So, so this guy is as far... And the years after the Great War. He's as far physically removed... He's far, far removed physically from West, as in the short story, as his physical... Look, he looks like he works at Best Buy. Yeah. And if you have any questions about your operating system, he'd be glad to help you out with that. Yeah. Have you heard about the Geek Squad? It's like, you cannot get any further, uh, you know, removed from Lovecraft's version of West and, you know without changing the sex or ethnicity. Yeah. It, it, but, ah, I was going to mention something before and then we got tangented. I'm sorry. Oh yes, in the uh, Stuart Gordon Lovecraft, they had a thing which was cut out in the, in the filmed version, but it was in deleted scenes, where uh, West would actually use the reanimating fluid on himself to other interesting effects. Not de-aging, because you know, you can tell Jeffrey Combs ages regretfully. If you have a zombie erection that lasts more than four hours, please see Herbert West immediately. <laughs> but uh, he did it, so Herbert, Herbert West did it, basically it removed his need to sleep. And that's why he like apparently never slept. And this one just all sorts of confusing places. Like, you mm -hmm. think she escapes through the bathtub? Go with it. Yeah. And then she's in Mad Max, but on the like planet for the free body problem. Deep cut. And then... Halloween, but guy, and then they're both. They can all like talk to each other at twilight, and they stab they might each be the other. Same, they might be the same person. The throat, and then the wind blows them away, and I, and then there was the credits, and we're like, oh. I, I'm, right. I'm I'm really glad this. I'm really sad that this isn't more well known because then someone would have put an explanation of what the fuck was going on in it. You can like write to someone That's because crazy. you know I'm gonna watch this for notes again, probably with the, with uh, the minions and all. <laughs> and then I might have to watch it again. To try and, just by myself, to try and work out what the fuck was going on. Although we were looking at the credits, and they had a barista. Like, not someone who played a barista. Like, there was an actual barista, like, part of the cast and crew. And I think that's, you know, that's so Italian. Do you know what would have been even more impressive? What? If Dave Barista was there. He's like a really muscular, uh, you know, literal-minded barista. Stop it. <laughs> Dave is not like that in real life. He's not Drax in real life. I remembered what that film was, the oh. one that's on the Canadian cinema. What? When we're at Con Bravo. Oh. Stuber, that's the film, Dave Bautista new film. Action film. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apparently he's become really good friends with the actor. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I know, right? That's nothing to do with this. But yeah, so, I can't... Oh, Dragon Age Inquisition is inside of it. Yes. I'll take it out. I'm, I'm replaying Inquisition is, because there's nothing else to do. Oh, this is so annoying. Like, We've got I'm, the cover. I'm like, like, about a few hours into Kingdoms of Amalur on, on you know, PS3... 
but then I'm also kind of halfway through Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age of PS4. I really want to play replay Final Fantasy VIII, but I want to wait until the re-edition comes out. So I'm just playing Inquisition again, because, you know... It looks like yeah, the cover to an opera as done by Julie Taymor. But, <laughs> but, okay, you got the cover, you got the back. But look at that, look. The fucking thing is upside down. I hate that. It's upside, it's upside down. You bastards, I put the, them like that, it's it's going the opposite direction. I hate you have one book that was, like, published in another country or, or has, like, something weird like that, and you're like... Why? So you have to, like, shelve it upside down in your bookcase, because you're like, well... Fuck this. You bastards. Exactly. God Italians. Damn God damn it, Italy. What did you do? We know what they got up to yeah. during the First war. of all, you, your McDonald's had these weird croquette things with like spinach inside. Oh no. Oh, and then you had uh, like, you know, Nutella pizza and all years before anyone else. It's like, what the fuck? This, this, this third strike. Italy. I'm going to come out and say it. Nutella's just okay. I don't know why everyone went bugfuck nanners about it, like, ten years ago, or actually, yeah, about ten, about ten years ago, I was like, oh, it's European. Like, hazelnuts are okay, and Nutella is okay. It's like chocolate peanut butter, but another flavor. Like, it's also really bad for you. It's got a shit ton of sugar and fat in it. But everyone acts like it's a second fucking coming of Christ, and I don't know why. I don't. I don't give a fuck about it. What are you Googling now? Oh, I figured we're approaching ah! the end. God fucking damn you, advert. You need to get, like, an ad blocker on your phone. I feel like I should be, like, rapping ironically or something. I think this is uh, us point to the end. Unless yes. we have more things to talk about. Oh, really? you said it all. Yeah. So I don't know if anyone was dreaming of this, but you got it for free because no one actually wanted this. Nobody wanted this, and yet you got it anyway. What are you doing?